Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris, and today on the show, we're going to talk about the method of initial rates. What's that? Well, basically, it's a way to determine how the rate of a chemical reaction depends on the concentration of the chemical species present. So, for example, if we take a look at the decomposition of ozone, that's O3 right there, we want to know how does the rate of the decomposition of ozone depend on the concentration of nitrogen monoxide and ozone. This is important because it turns out ozone can be depleted in the atmosphere by this chemical reaction, and that's what you see in this map down here. So this is the globe with color scheme that tells you about the concentration of ozone. And you'll notice blue means there's a lower concentration of ozone. So you can see that above Antarctica, the ozone has been depleted. And so we want to know how does the rate of ozone depletion depend on the concentration of ozone and the concentration of nitrogen monoxide. If it depends on the concentration of nitrogen monoxide to the third power, then that's bad because that means if we increase the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, ozone depletion will occur much faster. So how can we do this? Well, we know we can write down the generic rate law like this, that the rate of our chemical species, the rate of our chemical reaction, is equal to K, the rate constant, times NO, the concentration of nitrogen monoxide, to some unknown constant alpha. We don't know that. That's what we're going to try to figure out. Times the concentration of uh, ozone to some unknown power, once again, beta. So we don't know these guys. And that's what we're going to try to figure out in this video, those alpha and betas. Maybe it depends on it to the first power or the second power, or maybe the zeroth power. Maybe it doesn't depend on those concentrations at all. And the method of initial rates is going to let us solve that. How can we do that? Well, one thing we can do is we can go into the lab and we can run a trial where we fix the concentrations of our nitrogen monoxide and ozone and we record the rate. So we're plugging in onto this right side of the equation, the concentration of those two species and reading out the rate. Let's take a look at a trial. So here's one trial where we have nitrogen monoxide. We've set the concentration to 1 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. We set the concentration of ozone to 3 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. And then here we're reading out the rate of the chemical reaction. So that gives us one, two, three things in our chemical reaction. But we still don't know this guy, this guy, and this guy. So if we just ran one trial, we'd be stuck because we have one equation, three unknowns. And we can't solve that algebraically. So what we have to do instead for the method of initial rates to work is go into the lab and run a bunch of trials. And so here on this next slide, what we see are a bunch of trials. We've run now five separate trials, and some, some of the time what we'll do is we'll hold one of the chemical reactants constant. We won't change it between trials, and we'll change the concentration of the other one. And this will let us, with using some math tricks I'm about to show you, figure out what alpha and beta are. So, let's take a look at how that works. Here's the three steps. Step one says identify two trials where only one reactant is changing. Okay, so in our first trial, trial one, our nitrogen monoxide concentration is one times to the minus six, and our ozone concentration is three times to the minus six. In our second trial, nitrogen monoxide concentration actually stays unchanged, still one times to the minus six, but our ozone concentration doubles. And so that means that those two trials are a good set of trials to pick out to start solving for alpha and beta, and I'll show you how. Step two says divide the two rate equations and solve for alpha or beta. Let's start by writing down the rate equation just for one of the trials. So we'll start with trial one. R1 is equal to K, the rate constant, times the concentration of nitrogen monoxide. We're going to put a one down there because it's the concentration of nitrogen monoxide in the first trial. Raised to alpha, times the concentration of ozone in the first trial, raised to beta. What we're going to do now is just write that same rate equation, but for the second trial. And we're going to divide these two guys. So rate 2 is going to be equal to K once again, nitrogen monoxide, alpha, and we're going to put the 2 down there to talk about the second trial, and then ozone to the beta, and again we're going to put the 2 to indicate that's for the second trial. Now critically here, remember that we said the concentration of nitrogen monoxide for trial 1 is equal to the concentration of nitrogen monoxide for trial 2. And what that means is that these guys are going to drop out of our algebra equation. That guy drops out, that guy drops out. And our k's are going to similarly cancel. And what that means is that we're left with rate 1 over rate 2 is equal to 
our concentration of ozone in trial one divided by the concentration of ozone in trial two, all raised to the beta. Since they're both raised to the beta power, we can just put that outside those burger parentheses, which is gonna help us solve this problem. Now, we wanna get beta. And if we wanna get beta, we need to take the natural log of both sides, so beta will come down. If you're not familiar with logarithm traits, I'll link to a video on that below, and that'll help you brush up on your logarithm skills and show you why this is true. So we can take the natural log of both sides, and what that allows us to do is now take this beta down in front. And that's just a property of logs. So log of R1 over R2 is equal to beta times the natural log of R2 oxygen species concentrations. All right. And now what we need to do is we just plug in our rates in our ozone concentrations and we solve for beta. So we're going to plug in log of R1, which in this case is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus fifth over, here we have um, 1.32 times 10 to the minus 4, and that's equal to beta natural log, and we're going to plug in our ozone concentrations, which is 3 times 10 to the minus 6, over 6 times 10 to the minus 6. Turns out both of those things in the logs are equal to 1 half. So what we get out then is log of 0 0.5 is equal to beta times log of 0 0.5. Now you could plug in the log of 0 0.5 get out a number, and then finish the problem. But since those are the same on both sides, I'm just going to divide both sides by a log of 0 0.5. And those are going to cancel out. And those are going to divide to 1. So what we're going to get is 1 is equal to beta. So we just solve for beta. And those steps will work regardless of whether beta is 1 or 2 or 3. We've solved for beta. And now what we need to do is go back, find another set of trials, and solve for alpha. So that is step 3. So I'm going to clear off this slide, and we're going to remember that for beta, we got 1. And now what we need to do is again find two trials where one reactant is changing and the other is not. Now we want to look for one where ozone is constant, because we already have, we already have our beta. And so if we want alpha, then we need to find ones where ozone is constant. And so if we look down right here at trial 3 and trial 4, we'll notice that ozone stays the same while nitrogen monoxide doubles. And so that's the set of rate laws we'll now use. So once again, what we're gonna get is our rate laws divided. So we're gonna get rate, not one in this case, but rate three is equal to K times the concentration of nitrogen monoxide and the third trial to the alpha times ozone and the third trial to the first power, because we now know what that exponent is, divided by R4, which is equal to K, times nitrogen monoxide, again to alpha, for the fourth trial. Ozone to the first trial, or to the first power, for the fourth trial. And again, these guys are equal, because that's why we picked trial three and four. So that drops out, and that drops out. And you can see where this is going, the same place that the last one did. So now we get R3 over R4 is equal to... nitrogen monoxide for the third trial divided by nitrogen monoxide for the fourth trial all raised to alpha. And again we're going to use the trick where we take the natural log of both sides and again that's going to allow us to write the log of R3 over R4 is now equal to alpha times the log of the concentration of NO3 or I'm sorry NO for the third trial divided by NO for the fourth trial. And now, once again, we're going to plug in those values. So for our rates, for rate 3, we're going to get 1.98 times 10 to the minus fourth, divided by 3.96 times 10 to the minus fourth. That's going to be equal to alpha. Let's write that a little neater. Natural log. And then our concentrations are 1 times 10 to the minus 6 for trial 3, and 2 times 10 to the minus 6 
for trial four. We're just getting these from the table. That's why we picked those values. And once again, we'll see that these guys are both actually equal to log of one half. So what we'll get is log of 0 0.5 is equal to alpha times log of 0 0.5. And then once again, when we divide both sides by log of 0 0.5, we're going to get that alpha is equal to 1. So now we just solve for alpha and beta. So let's write that final rate law. We know that our rate law is rate is equal to K times the concentration of nitrogen monoxide times the concentration of ozone. Those are both to the first power. So that's sort of the boring result, to be honest, right? It's a little more interesting if one of them squared or one of them zero. But now we know the rate law. And in fact, now if you want to, you can actually find K, right? If I want to find K, all I do is pick out an NO value and an O3 value and a rate. I just need one trial for that, and I can even calculate K. So from these multiple trials and this method called the method of initial rates, we can actually figure out the full rate law and the rate constant. So thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. If you have any questions, ask them below. Visit my channel to check out more chemistry videos and subscribe to Real Chemistry. Thanks for watching.